Tonight on Access TV, live live with Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh <laughs> with Keith Robinson, Bill Dodds, Giannis Pappas, Khalees Hawkins, and your host, TJ Miller. I would like to eat two Italian beef sandwiches in exactly one minute. From the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, TJ Miller. in the world. <laughs> we were all screaming and clapping. Welcome, you guys, Axis.tv, because Axis.com was taken. <laughs> they tried to do Axis.net, but who the fuck goes on there? <laughs> guys, and I am going to be using some language. Uh, this is an uncensored program that's live to broadcast. So there are literally millions, probably maybe tens of thousands, at least a hundred people. <laughs> watching right now from their homes. Some of them have, mu they have mustard on their penises. <laughs> That's not true, but statistically, at least a couple people were like, I do? Oh, I don't, I'm a woman. <laughs> so this is so exciting and it's uncensored. So that means there's gonna, there might be some language, some words, <laughs> some sentences that you guys maybe, you know, aren't used to hearing on television or to television taping, right? You know, I might s say something like the F word, right? I may say penis. <laughs> I may say lesbiotronic. <laughs> it's not a real word, but it sounds cool. <laughs> I may say fiscal cliff. <laughs> that is literally the only political humor you'll hear the entire night. <laughs> For me, at least, sometimes I'll need to address, you know, the, the television viewing audience directly because I'm so excited you guys are here. You ready to have fun? Yeah? Look at this beautiful live crowd. Look at that. So exciting. But you're here with us, you know. Everybody's watching live as this is happening for me. And I don't know why I looked at my watch. <laughs> as it's happening for me, it's happening for you, you know. My, my, my parents are tuning in, my grandparents. Grandmammy, that's what I call her. <laughs> Grandmammy, if you're listening, I want to tell you thank you for all the years of love, for your patience. <laughs> and your Christmas present was bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do with a mobile, huh? <laughs> sure, it's fun. Also, it's important to understand, you know, this is a live to broadcast show. Sometimes things that I'm going to say, like in a live performance, aren't going to get huge laughs, you know? And that's okay, you know? We need to be okay with that. Sometimes I'm going to talk about something. It's going to seem like it's leading somewhere because it's got some sort of intensity behind it. There's obviously an impetus to the reason that I brought it up when I'm here on stage and in people's living rooms. <laughs> Now, I wanted to make this really clear, okay? <laughs> now, we're on Axis.tv. Now, a lot of people, you know, haven't heard of that, you know? They don't think it's a real thing. <laughs> Neither is Verizon Vios or whatever the fuck <laughs> it's called. You know? But th this is really, this is a bold experiment in television, you know? Because as you're experiencing this, people at home are experiencing it, you know? People at home can see me suddenly making a connection. <laughs> totally out of nowhere, just immediately recognizing, now that's a girl 
who had her bangs cut so that they swooped to the right. <laughs> but unlike the television viewing audience, they won't feel this. <laughs> No, 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 you'll have to come to New York City for that. <laughs> now, I do want to say, and this, this is important because, you know, this is kind of a new technology, you know? It's like those Priuses. Have you guys been in those? <laughs> it's kind of a new technology. We are going to have, we, you know, we'll have some, uh, you know, Access TV wanted me to tell you guys that there's a possibility the live show obviously continues on because it's reality. But the broadcast, there may be times when the picture will freeze. We've been having satellite feed issues. And if the picture freezes, the audio will continue. But don't wor <laughs> worry about that because then it'll suddenly catch up and then you'll be right back on target. So you guys, just be okay with that. Know that if you're at home and the picture suddenly freezes, then... because the audio is going to continue. <laughs> and then we'll be right back into it, and then we'll be able to talk about it. And then, you know, it's important for you guys to really follow the punchline. <laughs> and that's what a rhinoceros does. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was recently at one of these dancing clubs. Have you been to any of these? Have you been to the dancing clubs? Look at those boots. They're at attacking your thighs. You've been to a, <laughs> have you been to a dancing club? You haven't been in this building. Well, that, that makes sense because there's not a dance club here. But you, you mean not in New York City? And have you ever been to a dancing club before? Have you seen this booty shaking that they're doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of these women and even some men are doing booty shaking which is just a dance that only centers around the booty. That's it. I mean, I walked in one of these dance clubs and one of these guys was like. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? I've been making it up. I, I, you, the picture isn't freezing at all. <laughs> yeah! It's a joke on people watching TV. <laughs> so only you guys can hear me. They're like, what is wrong with my TV? <laughs> I should have gotten direct TV. Then I would exclude people from uh, my programming. <laughs> Wait, but I said that the audio can continue. So I guess the people on television are hearing all this. <laughs> God, my thighs hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry, America, I lied to you. <laughs> there's, no, there's no satellite problems. I was just freezing on purpose because I thought it would be funny. <laughs> just like I thought it would be funny to say that that woman's boots are enveloping her upper torso. <laughs> and I don't want to lie to you guys. I want to tell you the truth. This is coming to you live. Real broadcast. And to prove it, I'm going to talk to some of the people in the audience. Brian, you ready? ready? Let's go over here and see what's... Look at Brian. He's so ready. He said ready like he's been waiting to say it all day. <laughs> I was like, Brian, you ready? He's like, ready! <laughs> I mean, get over here. Look at this guy. Come on. Who can we get? Come on, look at this guy. He's holding... I love a man who's just gingerly... Get that, Brian. He's got his hand on a woman's leg, but in a very non-committal way. <laughs> You ever do that? It's not a guy who's really gripping the thigh, but he's like, I'm over there. <laughs> you know? That's, I mean, that must be hot in bed. You know, you're the kind of guy that fingers like this. Guys, I am so excited about this show. Are you guys ready to be part of history? Yeah or no? Yes! Yes! And thank you guys for tuning in. 
Get ready for a great show. Don't leave us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Felice Hawkins is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Ready for your first comedian? You better believe you are. Yes, come on! Right now, you guys, my hair and her hair had sex and gave birth to Carrot Top. Give it up for Khalees Hawkins! All right, all right. Hi, you guys. Um, okay. I'm at a point in my life where I've realized I'm not gonna turn out as cool as I was hoping I was gonna turn out. I was at this really cool club last week and everybody in there just was doing it better than me. We were in the bathroom, this girl comes into the stall next to mine and she answered her cell phone. But this is how she answered it. She's like, nothing, just taking a shit, what's good? <laughs> wow, <laughs> I can't compete with that. The best thing I got going for me right now is jeggings, but that's like a woman's worst frenemy. Jeggings, you can buy two sizes smaller than you actually wear in pants, but then if you gain seven pounds, they'll never tell you. <laughs> they'll just stretch over your new fat and stare at you in the mirror like, mm-hmm, girl, you still got it. <laughs> Send you out. <laughs> this is like, a world to me is like kind of ruled by white men, right? It's kind of true. Uh, <laughs> and being like a single black mom with an Indian boyfriend, it's like I'm not even trying. I don't even. <laughs> My boyfriend's Indian and his mom doesn't approve of me because I'm black, which is kind of racist, but it's okay. He pulled me aside and he explained it to me. He said, don't worry about what she thinks, babe, because Indian guys don't care what women think. <laughs> Well, I guess I don't have anything to worry about, huh? <laughs> he took me and my daughter out to a restaurant recently, but it was embarrassing because she kept yelling, Mommy, where's your boyfriend? Where's your boyfriend? But he was standing right next to us. She just couldn't pick him out because we were in an Indian restaurant. I was like, <laughs> I was like, he's this one. <laughs> but it was all right. Don't be nervous. I pulled him aside, I explained it to him. I said, don't worry about what she thinks, babe because black moms don't care what their kids think. <laughs> so everybody's okay. <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm racist. I just don't know anything about anybody else's countries or cultures. I was, <laughs> I was hanging out at this bar next to this Eastern European guy. He was trying to tell me about where his country is. He's like, you know where Yugoslavia used to be? And I was like, oh shit. What the hell happened to Yugoslavia? <laughs> He stopped talking to me. <laughs> so I'll tell you more about myself. Uh, my daughter, when she was five, she came back with an ear infection. And I was nervous, because that's like, you know, a big deal to moms when the kids get sick. You gotta worry about that kind of thing. I was upset. Took her to a pharmacy. There was a moment, though, in the pharmacy when I realized that five years and nine months ago, I'd come to the same pharmacy <laughs> to get the day after pill. Now I was back. <laughs> Getting ear infection medicine. I thought, well, this shit better fucking work this time. Because they owe me. <laughs> you know how hard it is to date when you have a baby? I couldn't even meet a guy and go out. I just ended up talking on the phone with him all night. One time, it led to phone sex. It was really awkward because she was in the next room sleeping. I said, we got to be quiet because I don't want to wake up my baby. He said, okay, just give me a phone sex blowjob. <laughs> I don't even know, what is, the, what is the sound effect for a phone sex? I didn't know what to do, I tried, I was like, uh. You like that? These are your balls. And I swear, a few seconds later, she came in from the next room and she was like, ooh. But no, why? It's so embarrassing, right? Oh my God, I can't compete with younger women. 
I shouldn't have to. <laughs> I shouldn't have to. It's irritating. I'm, I'm not even that good when I go on a date, though, because I'm awkward. Like, I don't, I don't like to be on the date. I don't know how to order off the menu. It makes me uncomfortable. It makes me feel like I'm homeless, like I'm begging for something from the guy. The guy hands me the menu, and I don't even know how to do it. I'm like, could you buy me this Coke? <laughs> but I feel like... I feel like all he hears me saying is, ah, it's good, man. You spare some change for this appetizer right here. Now, I am a single, independent woman. But this was a rough year, so I came on this date to get some calamari on. Oh. That's how I feel. <laughs> well, I know some people in the audience are looking at me like, no, you're probably just a bitch. <laughs> That's what people like to call you. They call you a bitch. Guys love that. They call you a bitch so often. I'm desensitized to it. It doesn't bother me anymore if you call me a bitch. It doesn't work. It's like that one perfect word you think you have against us. I'm looking for the perfect insult for a guy. That's what my mission is. But there's no one word. So I'm trying to figure out a way to hurt men's feelings. <laughs> the best I've come up with is you can hurt a guy's feelings through his occupation. No matter how high he's climbed in life, he always wishes he was just a little bit higher. So all you gotta do is find out what he does and insult him with it. Like if your boyfriend is a lawyer, like, oh, look at you, you're a lawyer. That's amazing, wow, but you're not a judge, why not? You couldn't afford the classes, what's happening? You couldn't be the boss? It's great, it works on everybody. Like if you run into Donald Trump, like look at you, you're Donald Trump, you got all that money, you got the Trump Towers, but you're not the president, why you couldn't find a birth certificate that works? Well, you wouldn't. And just, just keep going. <laughs> it's great. It works on everybody. I love it. <laughs> My ex-boyfriend called me a whore. That's why I want to get guys back. He called me a whore because he found out that I had sex with somebody he knows. But to be fair, that sex happened four years before I met him. That's how fragile a man's ego is. Is that when he found out? He had the nerve to call me up, complaining. He was like, but I thought that my penis was the only penis that you know that I know about, but you put his penis where I put my penis? That's not where his penis goes. <laughs> Men are just so delicate. <laughs> but calling a grown woman a whore is like trying to trick a little girl into thinking there's a boogeyman hiding under her bed. I am old enough now to fuck that boogeyman. <laughs> And then afterwards, I'll look at the boogeyman, like, look at you, you're a boogeyman, but you're not Michael Myers, why not? Where's your movie? What happened? You can't act? <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not dating anymore. I'm glad I'm in a relationship with an Indian. It's great, because <laughs> I named my daughter Asha, which happens to be a very common Indian name in India. It means hope. Uh, in America, it just means free food stamps. <laughs> He was trying to connect with my daughter. He was like, your name is very Indian. It's, it means hope. My aunt's name is Asha. Your name is Asha. She's like, my name is Asha Hawkins. And my mom's name is Khalees Hawkins. He said, what's my name? She's confused. She's like, Indian Hawkins? I don't know. <laughs> I told him I was going to tell that joke. He got mad at me because <laughs> he said it's his joke. I said, well, technically, since she said it to you, that's Asha's joke. And since she's my daughter, she's my writer. So it's going to be... <laughs> My joke, unless you plan on sticking around and putting up with her bullshit and helping her get into college and just being miserable for the rest of your life, that's gonna be my joke. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm Khalees Hawkins. <laughs> STV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Bill Dawes is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to Access TI TV!
What fun. Listen, a lot of you people are thinking, oh, look, you know, he's sitting over there with this guy slipping his tongue into his ear. But I maintain that he slipped his ear into my tongue. How you doing? Good. Great. You pretty good? Awesome. Ooh, I love a black guy with a goatee and glasses. It's like, is this guy gonna rob me or do my taxes? Wasn't Khalees great? Give it up one more time for her, you guys. How fun was that? So fun. So fun. One of those... It was one of those great situations where she said a joke. She was kind of teasing her Indian boyfriend. I laughed just a little too loud. And then I think an Indian guy in the audience kind of gave me one of these, like... I don't know if he was Indian. I couldn't tell. He wasn't being condescending to me about trying to start up my Macintosh. <laughs> you guys ready for the next comedian? Yeah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen him on TV. You've seen him in the movies. You've seen him on Broadway. He's one of my best friends until he borrowed money from me. Bill Dawes! <laughs> it's live, Bill. DJ Miller. Bill, it's live. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, fuck. Hey, guys, how you doing? Whoa, yeah. I, uh, I gotta tell you, I'm, uh, I'm celebrating my one year anniversary <laughs> of, uh, of being single. And uh, I kind of want to fuck that girl, that's why I'm pointing at her. Um, <laughs> I got dumped. Anyone been dumped before? A couple losers, the rest of you guys are undefeated. Is that the deal? Yeah, I got a... Uh, it sucks too, because I feel like I'm a good boyfriend. Like, I'm a nice guy. I'm a chivalrous guy. I hold the door open for bitches. Uh, and I'm a very giving lover too. What's up? I am. Like, almost every morning I try to wake my girl up with oral sex, right? That's nice. But she never appreciated it. She didn't. She would just gag. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know, after I got dumb, I don't, I'm not romantic anymore. I don't know if I believe in love. Like, I used to be the guy, I used to meet a girl, I want her to go head over heels. Now I meet a girl, I just want her heels to go over her head. <laughs> By the way, ladies, that's the only time we notice your shoes. Did you know that? <laughs> we don't fucking care. My ex would wear her shoe, her high heels everywhere, and she was 5'10", and her heels would make her 6'2". She just wanted attention. Guys were like, well, you're tall, how tall are you? And then she state her height and heels. Oh, I'm 6'2 in heels. <laughs> I'm 6'2 in heels. Really, you can do that? Well, fuck, I'm 7'8 on a unicycle. <laughs> My dick is 12 inches if you start from the butt crack and you work your way up. And then you count the overhang on the condom. <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't wear condoms, I don't, I, yeah. I pull out like a Lance Armstrong sponsor. I, uh, that's good. Hey, hold on. We got some Latin people in the room. Let me explain what pulling out is. Uh, wait, for the black people, for the black people, let me explain who Lance Armstrong is. Uh, the thing is, we don't give a shit about your heels. We don't notice them. All we notice is that half the time when you walk with them, you look like a special needs person. And if you can't walk in your shoes sober, why do you insist on walking in them drunk all the fucking time? My ex and her friends would walk around looking like these slutty baby giraffes. It's like... <laughs> Just stumbling around like bulimic bumper cars. Oh my God, we're... Ugh, ugh, ugh. You ever notice there's only white girls that stumble drunk? It's never black girls, right? That's because white girls get drunk from the waist down. Black girls get drunk from the neck up. Oh, hell no, motherfucker. You think I my face on that bullshit? You don't know me. Give me orders. Who you give me orders? Don't be giving me no orders. You're the cashier at Taco Bell. And Latin women, right? Latin women don't get drunk. Because you shouldn't drink when you're pregnant. Um, <laughs> And 17. <laughs> what, you guys don't like young girls? What's going on? I like young girls. I'm getting older. I'm, 
I'm that creep. I'm at the, my early to late thirties, and uh, <laughs> you know you're getting a little bit too old to ask out young girls. When you ask out a young girl, and she's like, "No, thanks, Mister." <laughs> <laughs> and being single isn't fun, man. I thought my, my life was gonna be freedom and threesomes. Not so much. Closer I got to a threesome, my buddy called me hammered when I was like, "Dude, I got this hot girl coming over. You should join us." What the fuck? <laughs> two guys and a girl? That's not a threesome, that's gay sex with a witness. <laughs> so I go over there, right? Because I ain't a quitter. Eiffel Tower needs two sides. And I'm going hard. For like an hour, it was exhausting. Finally, it was like, yo, time out. When's that girl getting here? <laughs> Thing is, man, I think I could get married. I'm at that age. You guys recommend marriage, huh? I feel like that's my choice in life. Either stay single or get married. Single, married, single, married, single, married. Either I sign for a lonely existence, jerking off to porn every night, or I stay single. <laughs> Look at the married man. Oh, I don't get that joke, honey. Oh. Well, I don't know what he means. No, I, uh, I better clear my Google history when I get home. fall in love. We don't know if we fucking do that. We fight it, don't we? I think our whole lives we just fight it. We put on armor, then we put on under armor, <laughs> affliction t-shirts. <laughs> and the day, man, we're sensitive. We just want to rip open that affliction t-shirt and just shoot a rainbow of love at a girl like a camera. Oh. Oh. Every guy wants to open, open his heart to a girl, right? That way she can enter your heart and then suck out all your hopes and dreams and goals <laughs> and opinions and DVR options. <laughs> until you're an empty shell that she can stuff all of her ideas into. Eventually we turn to these asexual marionettes. What do you want to do this weekend? Baby, you want to go to Ikea again? That sounds fantastic. Oh wow. <laughs> There's a sale on knickknacks. What are you waiting for? Let's look for Narmar. What's Narmar? Let's look for my balls. Where'd my balls go? <laughs> yeah. Men become puppets in a relationship. You don't believe me that men become puppets in relationships. Guess what? You scramble the letters in the word relationship, you get the phrase, I sit on her lap. Do you know how much fucking weed I had to smoke to figure that out? <laughs> a lot. It's okay though, I got a prescription though, I do. No, I need it because I have a couple broken, a couple broken dreams. <laughs> All right, you guys are great, have a good night, bye bye. <laughs> Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Giannis Pappas is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. This is, this is totally live comedy, guys. I don't do this often, but you know, this is a live show. Anything can happen. So I brought some cuties to throw in the audience. Now, these aren't tangerines. They're a smaller version of tangerines. I know there's a lot of guys out there that probably are thinking, I wish I had a tangerine, but really, I've got a cutie, you know? So I'm gonna throw them to those guys right now. Come on, be careful what's happening. Look at that! Why did you know it must be like that guy? That guy caught it. Hey, that's not for you, lady. <laughs> and then here's one for the Indian guy. Come on, that... Come on, this doesn't make sense for the stereotype, but who cares? <laughs> what happened? They still on the rafters? It's okay, we have a regular cleaning crew and then a monkey cleaning crew swings. <laughs> and guys, you ready for your next comedian? Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, his last name means potatoes in Italian. Give it up for Giannis Papas! Thank you. How is everybody? You guys good? Yeah. I am, uh, I'm in my 30s. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys can tell by my outfit and sneakers, but 
this is what adults look like now, so. <laughs> Does anyone get the feeling like we're living in a period of extended youth right now, like nobody wants to grow up? Yeah. I think it's cause like we, deep down we know like this is probably it. We know this is, how much better can it get? There's cocaine and sushi everywhere. We did it. We did it. You can eat raw fish like a Scandinavian king. I'm telling you, enjoy it. We got 10 years before China attacks and it's all over, so. That's why nobody wants to have kids, because we know, we know this is it. That's why we're holding on to youth for as long as possible, right? Women don't want to have kids. Women are waiting, they're dreaming, they're like, uh-uh, not till I'm 60, uh-uh. Uh, I'm gonna drink for about 10 or 20 years. And then maybe when I'm 60, I'll take some fertility drugs and create some evil science twin babies that aren't supposed to be here. Just science babies. It's crazy, like if you, it used to be like, if you were like a woman and you, and you were in your early 20s and you didn't have a kid, your friends thought something was wrong with you. They're like, she must be a lesbian or infertile or something. <laughs> now if you have a kid and you're in your early 20s, your friends think something's wrong with you. They're like, what the fuck? You're in your, you just ruined your entire life. <laughs> you are 21 years old, how can, did you even know the guy? <laughs> how can you do that to us? You didn't even consult with your friends first. I mean, did you forget we are going to Cancun next month? <laughs> it is an all-inclusive resort. There's no pregnant bitches allowed, so you do what you have to do or I will do it for you. <laughs> you are not ruining my vacation to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Nobody wants to grow up, man. Isn't it ironic when you think about it that our parents and grandparents worked so hard for us to have a better life and now we don't want to have kids because we don't want them to ruin our life? <laughs> We're like, fuck that, I can't have a kid right now. I have a blog with 12 readers, so. <laughs> Things are looking good. It's a weird time, man, it's hard to listen. That's the time we live in right now. It's hard to pay attention when someone's talking. You ever try to listen to somebody while you're holding your iPhone in your hand? You start shaking like a crack addict? Come on, somebody better die in your story real quick. <laughs> or I'm gonna tweet something right in your face. <laughs> you ever notice, man, you ever notice when you go to lunch or dinner, the first thing people do is take out their phone and put it on the table? <laughs> like it's a gun in the Old West or something. <laughs> That's a threat to you. It's like you have 30 seconds or I'm gonna shoot you right in the face and pick this thing up. Ah, your story's getting boring. Ah, ah, ah. It's amazing, because like as a people, we have cured a whole human emotion that doesn't exist anymore. We just rendered it out of existence. Boredom, no such thing. Done. Remember boredom? No such thing. You get bored for one second, take out your phone, angry birds, you're not bored anymore. Doesn't exist. You remember bored? Remember when you used to just have to take a shit and stare at a wall? Do you remember that? That was it. Maybe if you were lucky, you took a shit in a public restroom, someone wrote something racist on the wall to entertain you. <laughs> Otherwise, you just shit. No extracurricular activities. <laughs> shit and done, five minutes. Nowadays, people shit for like three, four hours straight. I took a shit yesterday for 90 minutes. I had no circulation in either one of my legs. You know those shits where it feels like your foot's gonna fall off? I was like, fuck it, I gotta finish the fourth season of The Wire, so I don't care. <laughs> I'm watching TV on my magic phone. <laughs> it's a crazy time to live in, man. And pornography's just gotten too crazy for me. It's gone too far. I don't watch it anymore. I gave it up. I gave it up. I know you're thinking you didn't, but I did. <laughs> I did. It's bad for you. And let me tell you something, ladies. I don't know if you know this. Every single man watches porno, no exceptions. No exceptions. Go ahead, turn your head and look at your nasty masturbating boyfriend's face. <laughs> Ladies, you know when you come home and your internet history is cleared? <laughs> Porno's gone too far, man. There's no storyline, there's no hair, there's nothing. <laughs> it just starts with a close-up of a female ass and some dude eating that ass like he's an Ethiopian eating ice cream sundae. <laughs> Which is completely unrealistic. Because nobody eats ass in real life without caution. When you eat an ass in real life, it's more like this.
No, it tastes like battery acid, honey. I can't. <laughs> and no man should be watching porno because you're never going to get a porno blowjob. It's never going to happen. It sets the standard too high. You're never going to come home and your wife's going to be like, welcome home, honey. <laughs> oh my God, this cock is so big, daddy. <laughs> You're gonna go home and get this. <laughs> Can you hurry it up? I got shit to do. <laughs> Did you wash your ball? Your ball stink. You better wash your ball. <laughs> All right, guys, my name's Giannis Pappas. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Keith Robinson is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Welcome back and give it up for Giannis Pavis! Yes. Wasn't he great? He was so great. He has a beard, though, that pedophiles see, and they go, it's a bit much. <laughs> Who is he going down on where their ass tastes like battery acid? <laughs> just hooking up with the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> He's just round back, going on and on and on. You guys, this is so exciting. I want to remind you also that I threw a banana at the audience, <laughs> and it is currently in the light fixture. There's kind of a tropical look to this area. <laughs> Guys, are you ready for your next comedian? Yeah! <laughs> he is so funny. We live in the same complex in San Diego, and we both love breast juices. Give it up for Keith Robinson! Come on, Darren, give it up! Uh, TJ Miller! Give it up for him. He's dressed like a magician's assistant. Give it up. <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing, man? Don't sit there and look at me like that. I don't even fucking try that. Come on, black dude. Don't sit there like, come on, brother. Don't fuck it up for us. <laughs> it's going to be all right, man. Don't worry about it. I got you. I'm drunk as shit right now. I don't even give a fuck. I am, I'm fucking, I've been drinking red wine all fucking night, man, just swirling it up. I love red wine, that's my shit, lady. I fucking love red wine. I'm addicted to that shit. But it's not a bad addiction. Not like you're gonna find me at four in the morning trying to blow a dude for a full body Cabernet. <laughs> what year is this shit, man? You can always tell, man, when somebody first got addicted. You can tell the exact year somebody first got addicted by the clothing that they're wearing. <laughs> you see somebody walk with a pair of parachute pants on? 1988, that's the fucking year. I know my shit, man. Don't fucking study me, man. What the fuck you doing studying me? You know what I mean? I've been around for a while, so I know shit. I know shit. I know... More shit, when you're young, you don't know a damn thing. That's why I figured he said, he, what's his name? Uh, Giannis Papas, I'm in my 30s, wow. I'm in my fucking 40s. You know what I mean? The older you get, the angrier you get. I wake up yelling for no damn reason. <laughs> Who the fuck <laughs> left the pot roast on the kitchen table? <laughs> and I live by myself. I don't even have a damn pot roast. <laughs> <laughs> But I've been around, I know shit, I know everything, man. This girl right here, she's crazy as cat shit. She's fucking nuts, but I know that because I've been around for a while, right? But you wouldn't even give a shit because she's cute. So you would still investigate that crazy. He's like one of those dudes you see in a horror movie that had noise in the basement, but go down there any goddamn way. Hello? Sarah? I know crazy, my son's mom nutty as hell. Fucking crazy, but she could fight a little bit too. You know what I mean? I'm talking about chin to shoulder. <laughs> pivot, see that shit? Anytime you see a woman pivot, get the fuck out of there. You understand me? <laughs> me and my son's mom fought nine times. I was two and seven. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Yes, I fight women, damn it. Yes, the fuck I do. I live in the hood. Women can fight in the damn hood. And you can always tell the girls in the hood that can really fight. Any girl you see that can barely make a ponytail, do not fuck with that girl. <laughs> Because she angry. I, mm, I wish a motherfucker would. <laughs> My son's mom would call me up out of nowhere and threaten to do shit to stuff I didn't even have. I'm like, hello? Motherfucker, I'll kill your turtles. Bitch, I don't have turtles. <laughs> well, I'll buy you some turtles and I'll smother every last one of them. What the fuck? You know how crazy but yet patient you gotta be to try to smother a turtle? <laughs> turtle can hang out for like 30 minutes in the shell. This bitch circling the shell. Come on out, motherfucker. <laughs> Fucking nutty ass. But I've been watching, you know I've been watching all those murder mystery TV shows. That's all I watch, murder. That's why I only date black women. That's all I date is black women. That's it. Don't get me wrong, I rate white women, but I date black women. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm fucking. <laughs> Look at this, she nervous as shit. What does he mean? I'm joking. <laughs> No, 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 I date black women because I know black women. I know how black women get mad. That's important. You got to know how, who you with get mad. Like a black woman get mad at you, she'll stab you. I can take a stab at you. <laughs> mm, I get it. A white woman make it look like he died of natural causes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you wake up, she's standing over you. Shh. No one can hear you. <laughs> All I watch is those serial killer documentaries. I love that shit. And every serial killer got a wife or a girlfriend. How the hell does that happen? How don't you know your loved one is a damn serial killer? If I had a woman that was a serial killer, I would know immediately. First of all, she's walking in those damn serial killer hours. Right, I check our clothes. Why the fuck do you have mud and gravel in your panties? <laughs> have you been murdering? <laughs> and if, look, if you're gonna go on your, your vacation, right, you're gonna go on your nice, safe resorts, right? You're gonna go on your resort, you go to one of those dangerous ass countries, stay right in your safe resort. Stay the fuck in your resort. Don't let your yapping girlfriend, I wanna go see the locals. This is not the real Jamaica. I wanna see the real. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's how you end up in a tub of ice with your kidneys missing. <laughs> I don't give a shit about the local. If I wanna see the locals, I'll call room service. You understand that shit? <laughs> y'all looking at each other to see if it's okay to laugh. <laughs> laugh on y'all, don't fucking look at us. <laughs> another, <laughs> another thing, man, don't be sensitive. That's the, I hate when people are too damn sensitive. You can't say shit now, because people get too damn offended. You don't know how to refer to people. Midgets, those little fuckers don't be called midgets. <laughs> they don't want to be called little fuckers either, but what can you do? <laughs> Even criminals got a nerve to be sensitive for what the hell you say to them. Pedophiles don't want to be called pedophiles. They want to be called priests. Now, all I'm asking... <laughs> oh, come on, that should have been a standing ovation. What the fuck is going on with this crowd? <laughs> come on, this guy's not even clapping for me. That's full of shit. Come on, sir. Did a priest touch you, sir? That's the problem. Put some baby oil on your feet so you couldn't run in a marble hall. <laughs> That is the funniest fucking visual you'll ever see in your fucking lives. But nowadays, you can't say shit without people being offended. You can't say shit. Everybody's waiting to be offended. You can get fired for saying some fucked up shit. They will fire you, but only if you have a good job. If you have a shitty job, you can say whatever the hell you want to say. You're never gonna turn on the news to see the manager of Applebee's restaurant on. Today we had to let Earl the dishwasher go for his homophobic tweets. <laughs> it's gonna be hard as hell replacing her.
We got to get gun control in hand. We got to get it in hand, goddammit. We, we got, I got you, brother, I got you. We got better allergy medicine control laws than gun control laws. You, you, it's easier to get an assault rifle than, uh, it's harder to get an assault rifle. She didn't just fuck up my thing. <laughs> no, you can get an assault rifle faster than you can get some clarity in D. You ever try getting clarity in D, the asshole behind the counter? When the last time you had clarity in D? <laughs> Motherfucker, the last time I had the sniffles, give me the fucking clarity D. You gotta actually have a gun to get some. Give me that fucking clarity D. Stop bullshit. Give me the clarity D. And what the gun lobbyists say? Guns don't kill people. People kill people. But yeah, guns kill a lot of people. Huh? You never heard of a mass choking, have you? 65 people choked at the Paramus Mall. <laughs> the choker's still on the loose. <laughs> All right, I, I gotta get out of here, man. I gotta fucking go! Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Thank you so much for joining us live. Khalees Hawkins, Bill Dawes, Giannis Papas, Keith Robinson. I'm TJ Miller tonight. Access.tv, not access.net.